Hello friends, this is Raj Sastri from Raj Option Trading. Today is April 20, 2022. Let's take a look at energy stocks. Energy has been one of the top performing sector, mainly because of geopolitical tensions. And also there is a lot of demand for energy. So with that, let's take a look at uh, energy stocks and also touch on ConocoPhillips and see how it's doing. So with that, look, ConocoPhillips stock price is around $101. Nice market cap, $131 billion. And it's done great year to date, 41%. When the stock market is not doing great, look, energy stocks are doing well. And it's been doing very well in one year. And also it's just slightly below its 52-week high. Um, not too much, just 5%. So this company wants to explore, develop and produce crude oil and natural gas globally. And their mission is to they exist to power the civilization. You know, that's a very good uh, mission statement. So with that, let's uh, look at energy stocks and also look at ConocoPhillip and see what are the best ones we can slowly buy. So with that, let's jump in. Look, ConocoPhillip from a management and leadership perspective, we got Lance and Lance has got nice 70, 79%, almost 80% rating, good approval rating from his employees. You know, that's a good one here. I think he's doing something right and leading the company very well. And from a glass door perspective, looks like they got nice work, work life balance and also great benefits. It looks like employees are liking it. And there are some layoffs. You know, this stock, as you may, many of you know, it's pegged to oil price. As oil goes higher, this company does great, but it's also a consistent winner. There will be some boom and bust. Uh, they had some layoffs a while ago. Not a big deal. I think the uh, situation is improving with all the oil price going higher. All right, now let's look into a little more details and dig deeper. You know, from a highlight perspective, uh, looks like this company has nice strategy here. They closed on great acquisitions like Conchco and Shell Permian. Uh, they're doing very well here. They also have this uh, um, Indonesia sale. That's a good one here. They returned nice 38% uh, cash to shareholders. That's also good. And improved their intensity and the target here. You know, I think overall doing very well here. Financially, nice $8 billion adjusted earnings and 14% uh, um, ROCE. I think they're doing very well here. They're generating good cash here and the ending cash of $5 billion or almost $6 billion. That's great here. And they produced a lot of oil oil as usual and there is some safety for COVID-19 mitigation. Looks like you know they're doing well. They also resumed Alaska development. So I think overall you know companies firing in all cylinders taking advantage of this uh, high oil price and geopolitical tension. All right, now let's jump in and look at ConocoPhillip in a little more detail. Look, this company produces, transports, and markets crude oil and natural gas. You know, both are doing very well now. Oil is doing well, natural gas is doing well, and this trend can continue for some more time. And look from a stock price perspective, what do you expect? Look at the tear, nicely going higher all the way. So I would, uh, stocks like this, I would wait for a little pullback and buy, you know, once in a while when general stock market goes higher, there will be sector rotation, folks buy tech stocks and oil stocks uh, come down slightly. That's when you jump in and buy a stock like ConocoPhillip and you don't buy at the top because you buy at the top, you know, you might get hurt. So I wait for a little pullback and then buy. From an analyst perspective, look, there's a strong buy here. 12 analysts, 12 analysts say buy, 2 say hold. So that's a good uh, uh, vibe among the analysts and they're recommending it strongly. And look, you know, they're generally doing very well here. And uh, looks like uh, Halliburton, they did very well for the Q1 here. You can expect the same thing from ConocoPhillip also. It's a good company. And looks, the, the commodities is surging, crude oil is surging, natural gas is surging. You know, that can be a good uh, tailwind for ConocoPhillip. And they can keep going higher, as you can see here. So with that, let's go into a little more detail. Look from a price target perspective, uh, we have a high target here of $150, as you can see here, low target of 96. You know, depending on which research you look at, you know, this one says 96 low target, 
and we got one more conservative low target here 77 i would typically look at the conservative target here and go with that one here probably 77 is a nice conservative target here and we got median price uh, 110 which is uh you know it, it has some more to go to reach the median price and from a rating perspective look this is where technicals agree with the fundamentals uh, you got uh, f um, analyst rating here technical rating saying um, buy and we got analyst saying buy so strong buy so this is where we got both technical as well as um, fundamentals you know they they tell you to buy this stock here so i would be a little careful i would be waiting for a little pullback here and then buy all right now let's jump in and uh, look at uh, top energy etfs look uh, all the energy etfs are doing great here look at the one year when the stock market is trying to see where to go all these energy etfs are done very well the standout is here look we got natural gas here natural gas is a nice standout look 116 percent and you got a dynamic energy here did great 113 percent and generally you know one of the big etf in the oil patch is xle look it's done great here in one year 74 percent so it's uh, you know doing well here and for the folks who love bollinger band look uh, xle it's at 80 dollars it's almost hugging its upper bollinger band here in a 20-day uh, period here so it tells you there's a strong trend here and look vwap perspective a uh, vwap is 80.55 our stock is at 80.36 that tells you on a daily VWAP perspective stock can go higher in the short term and the long term VWAP is around 77 so 77 could be a good stop loss level for folks who have um, XLE already so all right let's, let's go into some more detail here and look at the top stocks here so from an energy patch perspective look we got the top stocks here sorted by market capitalization as you can see here stock at the top which is exxon mobil which is one of my favorite along with the uh, cvx or chevron both are great here and what i've done is you know most of the folks buy energy for their dividend i also put a dividend here so you can look at the dividend yield so look company like exxon mobil right now they are doing great uh, and they're also paying a four percent dividend that's a good one here so i like this a uh, nice dividend here you can uh, just put this stock away and earn a nice dividend and we got a few more with very high dividend you got to be careful with the high dividend companies like pbr here look at the dividend yield here 21 percent you got to be a little bit careful look at the payout ratio also but looks like company had done well in the past and also look they got a good amount of free cash and cash i'm not too much worried in the scenario and they also got a nice overall score of 100 and you could also look at uh, the two-year and five-year performance here look many of these companies have done well you know i want to uh, draw your attention to conoco philip here look at the five-year performance and two-year performance this has done 139 percent in five year you know better than other big companies and also done great in two years looks like it's a consistent winner has done well and we got this company here little company eqnr looks like this also had done consistently well here it has done even better than uh, um, better than conoco philip and then we got a few more as you see here keep watching in a two-year and five-year performance here we got a few with nice uh, type five-year and two-year performance and with that you know um, i will not go through all these stocks i just want to list so that that way you have the list here you can look at those i would also look at rsi here uh, it's uh, very good to understand where the stock is going one of the reason i selected conoco philip is rsi is middle of the road here it's a 54 and it's got more room to run whereas other names uh, they got a little bit higher rsi as you can see here i would be waiting for a little pullback before i pull the plug and stock like epd here this used to be in the dumps last year it's doing very well look at the rsi here 74 that tells you at this time you know just wait for a little pullback and then you can buy 
All right, so great energy stock. They're doing very well, as you can see here. Um, look at the one-year performance in these names here. Nice one-year performance. And look at Devon Energy here. <laughs> it's tearing away. Nice performance here. Uh, Devon has done great. It's also one of my solid uh, stock here, doing very well. Look at the five-year performance and two-year performance. Looks like it's also doing very, very, very well. All right, so look at one more here. Uh, we got Marathon Petroleum. Look at the way it's going here. Uh, doing nicely here, nice performance. You could look at that one also. In general, you know, when the energy stocks goes higher, you know, all the boards will, uh, you know, go faster because uh, all the stock price is packed to either um, either natural gas or oil for most part. And we have some uranium, uranium stocks also. All right, we got a few more here. And look, it's a continuation. Look at the one-year performance, two-year performance, five-year performance. Looks like many of these stocks are done great. Look, we got Hess here. Hess has been... Uh, Tearing away, as you can see here, doing great. Nice performance, 160% in five year. And we got one more here, LNG. LNG, senior, senior energy, doing great. Look, energy is, uh, natural gas is tearing away here. Nice performance, look, 198% in last five years. And we got one more here. Uh, look, we got uh, Camco here. Camco is doing great. Look, it's uh, done great here. 191% in five year. Looks like uranium is uh, doing great of late. And we got a few more here. Look, this also tearing away here. AR, just $35 stock. Look at the surge here. I would be a little careful buying these names here. I would wait for a little pullback. Look, RSI 79 here. All right, so we got continuation. You know, it's sorted by market cap on a descending order. Uh, market cap keeps decreasing as we go forward. So we got some more, as you can see here. Uh, market cap is now going into 3 billion on the lower side. And keep watching one year, two year, five year performance. Many of these names have done great in one year, five year. Look, we got one right here, MTDR, Matador. Look at the performance in uh, five years, nice 161%. And I think it's uh, done great, uh, but it does not have uh, one year, two year on this uh, screen yet. And we got Murphy here. Murphy has been doing great. Look, Murphy has done uh, very good off late. Uh, you can look at that one too here. And as usual, keep watching the dividend here. We got dividend. Some companies pay a lot of dividend, as you can see here. <clears throat> All right. So now we look at, uh, you know, some more uh, details here and go from there. Look from a Conoco Philip from a snapshot perspective, stock price is 101 here. Nice $130 billion market cap. And it's a strong buy from analysts. It's been in the market since 78. It's, it's there forever, as you can see here. Per employee, they're making about six, I mean, four million dollar um, revenue. You know, that's a great revenue per employee. So companies are uh, firing in all cylinders. Um, as you see here, uh, their performance has been doing great. Look, a nice performance last, uh, um, you know, few uh, months and years. And if you look for the future, I mean, um, longer term, two year, five year, ten year, it's, it's has done great and look uh, next earnings is coming up in may you gotta be a little bit careful may 5th is the next earning here it's part of s p 100 s p 500 doing great and this one is uh, you know does much better than s p 500 it's uh, there is a correlation factor of 1.41 this is a little more volatile than s p 500 and look, um, you know, we got more details here from a financial perspective. Nice net margin, 18%. Great here. And they have nice working capital here. No need to worry. They got a lot of cash, $6 billion cash. And uh, debt to equity ratio is, um, let's see here, debt to equity right on top, uh, right here. So debt to equity ratio perspective is very low. They're paying down their debt. That's a good story here. And look, we got a few more details here, and we got your technicals like moving average. It's really doing well. It's a nice uh, trending up here from a moving moving average perspective. You know, uh, moving average five day, ten day, uh, even. 30-day all 
um, you know, current stock prices above all the moving averages. Nice uptrending uh, market here. And from a Bollinger Band perspective, it's on the higher Bollinger Band here. But on a Bollinger Band 20 perspective, it's almost middle of the road. That's why it's got more, more, room, more room to run here. And one month low is 96 and current price is 101. So, you know, expect, uh, you know, a little bit bumpy right at times. It can come back to one month low as a support level here. And as you scan through here, we got a bunch of technicals. I will not go through them. You know, if you're interested in the technical, we got uh, things like Ichimoku Cloud. I know many of you follow this one. You could look at uh, the support level here and uh, go from there. And from an overall uh, score perspective, we got overall score of 95. That's a great score. Company doing great here. From a morning star perspective, it gets a B grade from uh, financial, C for growth and uh, profitability. And I think it's doing very well here. You know, it's doing very well compared to the industry here from a, um, you know, from a performance perspective. It's doing great here. Nice earnings power and nice sentiment score. So overall, um, oil is doing great here. All the co co oil cohorts like ConocoPhillips, they're doing great. I would wait for a slight pullback and buy these names here. All right. From a numbers perspective, look, ConocoPhillips, uh, it's up and down. It's pegged to energy price, oil price, as you know here. Back in 2017, did not do well. 2018, 2019, did great. 2020, COVID, nobody drove. It came down. Now it's going higher nicely. So this is pegged to the oil price and the you know the way folks are drive and consume energy. Sales is doing great. Look at the clip here. Nice clip here. Shares outstanding is not not bad. I mean they they diluted slightly, but not too bad at all. Operating margin is pretty steady as you can see here overall. Net margin is also slightly downtrend here, but they're picking up as you can see here. Debt to equity, they're paying down some debt. I like it. Uh, I think they're doing well here. All right, now let's look at earnings history for ConocoPhillips. Look, nice earning beat here. It's a very good, consistent last few quarters. And uh, look, revenue is also nice here. Consistent revenue growth here. Uh, look, uh, revenue growth is nice year over year. You know, back in during COVID days, I think stock had some issues. Look, it came back. So big time here, missed some earning estimates. That's why, you know, this company is pegged to the energy price. When energy does well, this company also does great. And it was a $8 billion company back in 2017. Now it's a $16 billion company. You know, when it comes to oil patch, I would go with the little more stronger candidates like ConocoPhillips, like Devon, Exxon, um, Chevron, such companies companies who got deep pockets to you know, withstand this up and down energy market. All right. Now, let's look at the monthly performance metrics. We'll start with the XLE, which is one of the top energy ETF. Look, uh, this year, uh, XLE has done great. Nice uptrending market. 2021 also, also great for energy. Energy did overall well in 2021. 2020, COVID, uh, all the energy cores came down. 2018, we had a, a recession. I mean, not recession, inflation. All the energy patch came down here. That's why this is a boom and bust type market. You got to stick with great companies like like the one like ConocoPhillips and Exxon Mobil, Chevron, and so on and so forth. And look now, let's look at ConocoPhillips here. ConocoPhillips, look, uh, it's uh, something along same lines <clears throat> like XLE here. This year did great. Last year super performance. Look, 2020 COVID came down 13, 38 percent down as you can see here, and this is a boom and bust. That's why you got to go with the leaders like ConocoPhillip. Look, you know, even though energy goes up and down, if you stuck with ConocoPhillip, you've done great here. In a five-year, 10-year, you've done great. Uh, beat, uh, you know, many of these uh, indices nicely. All right, now let's jump in and look at the chart. From a chart perspective, ConocoPhillip is staring away. As you can see, a nice uptrending market. It's a five-year weekly chart. It's doing great. And now there's a small pullback, as you can see here. That's when you can slowly start buying and accumulating for the long haul. Expect, you know, energy can come down if there's some, uh, you know, war uh, stopping or something along those lines. Energy can come down. That's why I like to buy these on a, on a small pullback and then accumulate. 
All right, now let's jump in and look at a one-year chart. From a one-year chart perspective, look, uh, stock is tearing away here, and some consolidation, as you can see here. That's when I buy some little pullback here. And if you are selling some put options, look for these support levels here, nice support level. You could look at uh, S support and sell put option. Right now, IV percentile is 46. It's okay to sell some. Uh, look, I implied volatility is rising, so that's when you can sell some put options. Um, and be much below the current stock price. Maybe look at some support levels like this one right here. And look, uh, right now, um, the red line wants to go lower and blue line wants to go slightly higher. So it's in a neutral position right now. And there's a slight clock crossover that tells you the blue line crossed over red line. Uh, it's a little bit positive um, bias here. And on the balance volume perspective, folks are buying uh, ConocoPhillip and smart money. Uh, they're wondering what to do here. It came down. So that's why, you know, wait for a nice uh, pullback, a little more pullback here, and then slowly accumulate ConocoPhillip. All right, now let's look at... Uh, a little more detail and few more charts here. So from a Bollinger Band perspective, we got a uh, 20 period Bollinger Band. It's um, you know using this middle band as a support level and trying to bounce back from the middle band. And right now it's in a bullish territory between the middle band and the upper band. So that's when I buy. You know when it let's let it cool off slightly, come back to the middle band like it's uh, you know trying to do somewhere here, maybe slightly higher higher than the middle band, maybe around hundred dollars you could uh, buy this company and accumulate slowly all right now let's look at the uh, option chain from an option chain perspective stock price is at hundred dollars hundred one dollars all-time high is hundred and seven almost at the all-time high and if you look at the <clears throat> option volume here open interest nice open interest three thousand five hundred contracts at ninety two point five and around 105, which is slightly above the current stock price, we have a lot of contracts. Look, we got 5,000 contracts traded, 5,800 at 105. So from an option market, folks are bullish. They're buying uh, uh, out of the money call options and paying some good money also. Look, they're paying around $6. Um, you know, this company was much, much, much lower a couple of months ago. Uh, that's when you buy when it's slightly pulled back. Right now, it's too high. All right, <clears throat> so let's look at put call ratio here, PC ratio, it's 0 0.88. So that tells you, you know, folks are also hedging and buying some put options, but call volume is much higher than the put volume, still bullish. Uh, so uh, I think overall it's bullish. So stocks like this, when they're tearing away, I would wait for a slight uh, correction and then I buy them. All right, now you might wonder what should you do? You know, from a company perspective, this company is doing great. Their operating performance around the globe was outstanding. They also closed their uh, two significant acquisitions. That's a great news here. And look, they achieved 14% full year return of capital here. That's a great, uh, great one here. And they also returned $6 billion to shareholders. That's a 38% of cash from operations. So they're doing well. They're buying back, returning to shareholders. It's a good one here. And most importantly, I'm thrilled about their optimization work. They're optimizing their portfolio and uh, really gearing them toward the future. That's a good one here. And they also have a triple mandate they want to be responsible to deliver the oil and they want to generate competitive return and they also look at the net zero ambition i think that's a good one here it's a esg friendly company and finally it's a fundamentally great company um, it's a long-term buy look they've done great in a 10 year and five year also expect expect the fluctuation based on the oil price you know tomorrow there may be some news saying russian uh, war with the ukraine is all gone it's done so it might come down slightly that's why i buy stocks like conoco philip chevron exxon so on and so forth when they slightly pull back so you can hold it and you can keep earning the nice dividend uh, year after year so with that thank you very much happy investing and trading please subscribe